You're listening to the Qur'an Tafsir, Understanding the Word of Allah, a podcast dedicated to explaining the Qur'an presented by various reliable scholars. This podcast is powered by Seekers Hub Global. Visit SeekersHub.org for online courses, our Q&A service with reliable scholars, and engaging media. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد ذي القدر العظيم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله we reached the fifth section of our daily Quran recitations and in today's set of verses which are from Surah An-Nisa from verses 24 to verse 147 we'll be looking at four Keith will be touching upon four central themes. The first is that what are our family responsibilities and how do we fulfill those family responsibilities with excellence. Related to that, the second theme is how do you fulfill the rights of others? And this is an important emphasis throughout the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The third is a reminder of what the ultimate consequence of obeying Allah and His Messenger is. To to give us a clear sense of what is the purpose behind our obeying Allah and His Messenger. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us in the fourth point that we're going to touch upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to reflect upon the tremendous miracle of the Qur'an and what it represents. So the first, with respect to fulfilling our family responsibility with excellence, the Prophet ﷺ emphasized this meaning throughout his teachings. He told us ﷺ in the hadith related by Imam Tirmidhi that أَكْمَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِمَانًا أَحْسَنْهُمْ خُلُقًا that the believers most perfect in faith are those best in character. And the most virtuous of you are those most virtuous to their spouses or to their families. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I am the best of you to, to his spouses. So it's not just a theoretical thing that you aspire towards. We have a practical living model to strive to emulate sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that good character will be the weightiest of matters on the scales of good deeds in the hereafter and here in surah an-nisa in verse 34 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that men husbands literally men are responsible for their women right And this is a station of responsibility. It's not a rank of virtue. It's a burden of responsibility that men must take good care of their women with what Allah has given some more than others. Because Allah has given men the responsibility to provide and earn a living and given them the the physical and emotional aptitude to be able to do that and to take care of that responsibility. But this rank is a rank of responsibility. If fulfilled with excellence, then it's a rank of honor. Right? Then it's a rank of honor. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us because of what Allah has given some more than others and what they spend of their money. And righteous wives, righteous women are devout and guard what Allah has commanded to be guarded in the absence of their husbands. So women too have a responsibility. And if they fulfill their responsibility with excellence, then that responsibility is a responsibility that is a means of of ranks of honor with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this contains within it a call to recognizing your responsibility towards the rights of others and to f- strive to fulfill those rights with excellence in order that one lives lives of good and 
relationships and marriages in which there is contentment. And this is the attitude with respect to rights. Rights aren't something that you demand, but rather rights are something that you strive to fulfill with excellence, recognizing that this is first a responsibility that you have to fulfill those rights, and number two, that this is an opportunity of earning the good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you fulfill the right as Allah has commanded, in accordance with excellence. Related to that, about 25 verses later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the fulfillment of trusts. And we see in the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah that fulfilling the rights of others is a religious obligation. Fulfilling the rights of others is a religious obligation and has deep implications in our deen. Because the rights of others are an amana, are a trust that you have been entrusted with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, La imana liman la amana tala. There is no faith in one who does not fulfill in one who is not trustworthy. What is trustworthiness? That you can be trusted to fulfill the rights that you take on or the rights that others have upon you. And the Prophet ﷺ continued, and the hadith is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, وَلَا دِينَ لِمَنْ لَا عَهْدَ لَا And there's no religion in one who does not fulfill their commitments. And these are both the commitments that you take on. Right? You commit to helping someone, you commit to return someone's book, but also the, commi- the life commitments you've made, like the commitment you've made to your husband or to your wife. And in, with respect to the rights of others, the Prophet ﷺ gave a beautiful principle. He said, أَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّ Give everyone who has a right, their due right. So sometimes people wonder, should, should I fulfill the rights of my wife or the rights of my mother? That's the most sensitive relationship in humanity. I balance the rights of the mother and the wife. And many a man has lost his life over that. It's never an either or. The sunnah is give everyone who has a right their due right. And the sunnah is about a beautiful balance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verse 58 of Surah Ali Imran, Inna Allah ya'murukum and to addul amanati ila ahliha. Allah commands you to return trusts to their rightful owners. This has to do with things that you take on. So if you take something on for safekeeping for someone, that's a trust. If someone gives you something to give to someone else. So I went to Trinidad last week. Let's say someone gave me something to give to someone there. You should not accept a trust if you can, unless you can, you're sure that you'll be able to fulfill it. When you borrow something, that's a trust. But trusts are also the rights that you owe other people. You've been entrusted to fulfill those. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues that when you judge amongst people, judge with justice. What is our sense of justice? Justice is to give everyone their due. Justice is a right balance to give everyone their due. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closes the verse by saying, For Allah hears and sees everything. We don't fulfill the rights of others because, well, if you don't give that back to Talha, he's going to beat you up. No. Or that he's going to shame you. Or this or that. No. You fulfill trusts out of a sense that Allah is watching over you. He hears and sees. And He is your Lord. And that's the nature, that's the primary way of encouraging fulfillment of rights. I went to this one masjid, they put on this really ugly sign. That if anyone's mobile goes off, you have to pay five dollars. Actually, it was five pounds. It was in England. And if you don't pay the five pounds, you'll pay it on the day of judgment. And it's really very harshly worded. That's not how the sunnah deals with fulfillment of rights. It's by encouraging a person to inculcate within them the sense of responsibility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah always reminds us of. Whenever He mentions rights, He mentions that... You fulfill them for his sake. And the verses make clear that this is a means to be beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if Allah sees you and hears you, if he sees you fulfilling the rights with excellence, is the reward for excellence from the servant 
anything but Allah's excellence and favor upon the servant. So that's the third, the second lesson. The third is that what is the consequence of obeying Allah and His Messenger? Because sometimes we get stuck, we just do things. I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm doing this, avoiding the haram, doing the halal, this, that. But why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always reminds us of the purpose. He tells us in verse 69 of Surah Ali Imran, whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger will be amongst those whom Allah has blessed. Will be with them where? In the Akhirah. Who are those whom Allah has blessed? The messengers, the truthful, those who bear witness to the truth, the shuhada, and the righteous. And what excellent company they are. Right? So whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, what is the consequence? The close company of the most beloved servants of Allah. So if you get their company, it means that you too will be beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in this is an, what's called isharatun nas. The, an indication of the text that the key to entering into the state of beloved obedience is in this life to keep the company of the people likely to be, to be beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the theme in the Qur'an. Ya ladina amanu ittaqullah wa kunu sadiqeen Oh you who believe, be mindful of Allah and be with those who are true. Because if you are in a state of obedience, in the hereafter, you'll be with those who are beloved to Allah. But how do you get there in this life? By keeping the company of those beloved to Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, المرؤ مع من أحب A person will be with those whom they love. And the point is not to be with those people who are beloved to Allah. It's if you're with them, you'll be, be, you'll be beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is the obedience that's meant here? It is not just mechanical obedience. It, it refers to consistency in fulfilling your obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and upholding the recommended sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu with excellence and with sincerity. That is the obedience that whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, meaning with consistency, fulfilling what Allah has made obligatory, striving to bring the sunnah into one's actions in a beautiful way with sincerity. That is the obedience that is meant. And finally, in verse 82 of Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls upon us to reflect on the, the greatness of the Qur'an. Telling us that the greatest gift given Allah's creation is the gift of the Qur'an given to the, through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the greatest miracle ever given a Prophet. Because it contains manifest guidance and beauty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afala al Quran. Do they not reflect on the Quran? And the marvel of the Quran is that it gathers between general and specific meanings. Do they not reflect on the Quran in general? This is a book of guidance. If this is the, the your roadmap to eternal success, you should be reflecting on it deeply in general. But specifically reflect on the marvel of the Qur'an. That had it been from other than Allah, you would have found within it much inconsistency. Sometimes people wonder, why was the Qur'an revealed over 20 odd years? Why wasn't it all sent down once? And one of the reasons is that this is one of the proofs for it being from Allah. Because just think of your own life. Could, are you saying the same things today as you were saying 20 years ago? No. Even a few years back, you're thinking different things, saying different things. But the Qur'an, in its style, and its grammar, and language, and structure, is consistent throughout. In language, the, me the message is consistent throughout. The teachings are consistent throughout. And there's no inconsistency in any part of the Qur'an. And that's one of the proofs of it being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reflect on this verse, verse 82. And with that, one of the things that you should make a life commitment to do, and we're about to close, is reflect on the inimitability of the Qur'an. What makes the Qur'an a miracle. And it's called I'jazul Qur'an. 
try to learn about the linguistic aspect of why the Qur'an is incomparable and only possible to be from Allah. Learn about how the meanings and teachings and guidance and message of the Qur'an is inimitable. How it informs about matters of the past that only Allah could have informed about. The Prophet ﷺ could not possibly have known it. And about matters of the future that only Allah could inform about and every single one of which has come to pass of the, the things that have came to pass and others that are a divine promise that it will be as He has said subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, this call to reflection, to, to tadabbur, is that you think deeply about the meanings and implications of the verses of the Qur'an. Yes, it's good to recite it, and that's a religious duty. But along with reciting it, spend some time reflecting on it, even if it's a few verses every day. So let's say, inshallah, you recite the Qur'an regularly, and you recite pages and pages of Qur'an. But even if it is a couple of verses every day, even if it's just one verse, try to reflect deeply on one verse and understand about it. Learn its meanings. Fill your heart with marvel and awe at the meanings of the Qur'an. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he used to hold the Qur'an, he used to kiss it and place it against his forehead and say, هَذَا كِتَابُ Rabbi. This is the book of my Lord. Have a sense of awe of what it is and the greatness of the one who's addressing you. Because the significance of the Qur'an, what is it? It's not that this is what you recite to draw closer to Allah. When you recite the Qur'an, what is the greatness of the Qur'an? It is it's that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing you. So how do you stand in taraweeh? Some people wonder, how, how do I stand in taraweeh when I don't understand what it's saying? It's sufficient for you to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing you. And have that sense of awe that you are in the presence of Allah and He is addressing you. But then, take the steps towards increasing an understanding of its teachings and message. Fill your heart with love for it. Recite the Qur'an like a lover recites the Qur'an. Check your heart when you close the Mus'haf. When you're with someone you love, are you happy? Yes, I've, my time is up with Zubaydah. No, you're pained to leave the one you love. If this is your time with your beloved, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should feel pain that I have to step away from the Qur'an now. Nurture that, that love for the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the people of the Qur'an, of whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the people of Qur'an are the people of Allah and His most chosen. Thank you for listening to the Qur'an Tafsir, Understanding the Word of Allah. Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.